untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at Rigo, Streetwise Mentor, a 3 mana 2 2 legendary cat citizen, enters a battlefield with a shield counter on it, giving it some built in protection, and whenever we attack a player or planeswalker with one or more creatures with power 1 or less, we get to draw a card. So a nice card draw engine in a deck filled with cheap evasive creatures, which is exactly what we've got going on here. Then Arigo also has hybrid mana, so we can play it in a three-color deck, although we're mainly blue-white, splashing a few green cards. And then I've split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with our interaction, our removal spells, where we have a giant killer, source to plowshares, a few bound spells in blue with fading hope, silent departure, stern dismissal, unsummon, and then a witness protection can shrink something into a 1-1, and fateful absence can deal with creatures or planeswalkers. Then we also have some counter spells and other ways to protect the team with spell peers, wash away to counter an opposing commander, Veil of Summer can shine against blue and black decks, Disdainful Stroke, Memory Lapse, Negate and Dovin's Veto, counter spell and then heroic intervention can also save the team from an opposing sweeper. Then we've got some extra sources of card advantage, even though Rigo draws cards already, it doesn't hurt to have a few more card draw engines throughout the deck. So the Effigy lets us play creatures off the top, turning them into 1-1 birds, and since most of our creatures are 1-drops anyways, that doesn't really matter. We've got Coastal Piracy, letting us draw extra cards for each creature that hits the opponent, unlike Rigo that only draws one card every turn at most. Got Reconnaissance Mission doing the same, can also be cycled, and then at Teferi's Ageless Insight lets us draw extra cards whenever we would draw an additional card, so it plays very well with Rigo as well. And then Toski, a 1 1 indestructible, uncounterable squirrel, attacks each combat if able and also draws extra cards when our creatures hit the opponent. Then we've got a few sweeper effects with Citywide Bust, destroying all creatures with toughness 4 or greater, so this will be a one sided sweeper since all our creatures are quite small. And then a Dusk to Dawn is very similar, destroying all creatures with power 3 or greater, and with Aftermath we can play Dawn from our graveyard, returning all creature cards with power 2 or less from our graveyard to our hand. And very similar from Streets of New Capenna is Patch Up, a sorcery for 3 mana returning up to 3 target creature cards with total mana value 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, so could potentially get back 3 one drops, which is quite efficient. And then speaking of one drops, we've got a ton of those, with a lot of flying creatures mostly, Battlefield Ramp, Fairy Guide Mother, Healer's Hawk, Kitesail Cleric, Rustwing Falcon, and the Segovian Angel. Then in blue we have Artificer's Assistant, Fairy Seer, Mistcloaked Herald, Just Unblockable, Natural Disruptor, Terramander, Silver Raven, We've got Siren Storm Tamer can protect the team as well, Slither Blade, another unblockable creature, Spectral Sailor, Thousand Faced Shadow can also use Ninjutsu, and then Hope of Girapur. Then we've got some more expensive evasive creatures with Clarion Spirit generating 1-1 one, one flying spirit tokens whenever we cast our second spell each turn, and given our low curve we're very good at enabling it. We've got Eye Kite, a 1-2 flyer, gets plus 2 plus 0 as long as we've drawn 2 or more cards this turn, so attacks as a 1-powered creature to trigger Rigo, and then we'll hit the opponent for 3. Fairy Vandal doesn't stay 1-powered for very long as it will pick up additional plus 1 plus 1 counters to hit the opponent a little bit harder. Lancer Shredder, also very similar, can pick up more counters thanks to Connive and potentially loot through the deck. We've got Suspicious Stowaway, another unblockable creature, can potentially transform as well, drawing extra cards. We've got Skycat Sovereign, grows with the number of flying creatures we control and can generate 1-1 one, one flying cat bird creature tokens. We've got Exotic Pets, which we can flash in, making two unblockable fish tokens that can maybe pick up the shield counter from Rigo. And then our next category are the extra utility cards, where we have Esper Sentinel, shines in any white brawl deck. We've got Selfless Savior can maybe protect one of our key creatures, Hushbringer and Strict Proctor can nerf opposing enter the battlefield abilities, and we have very few in the deck ourselves. We've got Umezawa, which can make our entire team unblockable, as long as they have power or toughness one or less, which is the case for most of our creatures. Then Jolrael can generate additional 2-2 cat tokens whenever we draw our second card each turn, can potentially pump the team as well if we've got a full hand. And then we've got a bit of ramp with Arcane Signet and Ornithopter. And then Throne of the God Pharaoh is one of my favorite cards in the deck, because we're not really allowed to play Anthem effects that give the team additional power and toughness, because then we would be nerfing Rigo's ability. So instead, Throne deals damage to the opponent at the end of our turn equal to the number of tapped creatures we control, so we can essentially double our damage output from our 1-1 flyers without nerfing Rigo. 
and then we also have Time Warp to take an extra turn. And then our mana base is very straightforward, just a ton of mana fixing and mostly focusing on blue and white basic lands. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play facing Niv Mizzet, Parun, and our hand is probably a little bit too light on creatures, no counter spells either, and too many removal spells, which we don't need against a control deck. Okay, this is a little bit better. Still need a third land, but we can get started with probably a Storm Tamer. Next turn probably Shadow plus Tap lands, and then hopefully turn 3 Rigo to start us off. Toski being uncounterable also quite relevant. Okay, so we still need a land to play Rigo since double blue doesn't do it. So Plains or Forest over the top. Another island. So, yeah, we'll just hit for two. Can always unsummon one of our creatures if it gets targeted by a removal spell. Opponent's gonna brainstorm. So, no early Rigo, sadly. For all we know, our opponent would have been able to counter it, so we'll see what happens. Next turn, Toski is looking good. Right, can reveal the Snarl, and then I think Toski makes more sense than Rigo here, when our opponent's holding up 3 mana. And hope we get to connect and draw too. Alright, Brazen Borrower bounces Storm Tamer, still draw card. And more importantly, we've got a Toski in play, which is not that easy for the opponent to deal with. Now, that being said, opponent also has an uncounterable creature, so this Daneful Stroke is not going to be the best answer to it. For now, can play Rigo, and then we can maybe play Storm Tamer. Probably wanted to leave up double blue here. Opponent's got a counterspell, fair enough. Yeah, there's probably no point in keeping up Disdainful Stroke, but a City White Bust is a nice answer. So yeah, we'll play Storm Tamer, and then opponent can play Niv if they want, and kill one of our one toughness flyers in response to City White Bust. It's gonna be a Tap Land and Jace instead. Alright, kinda regretting not keeping up Disdainful Stroke now. Gonna minus Bouncing Toski. So, can replay Toski and kind of ignore Jace. Just hit the opponent to draw and see which other answers we pick up. And then maybe play Cleric as well. Okay. Opponent may be trying to set up niv plus another spell in the same turn. And then Jay's drawing with Niv can also trigger it. So let's see here. I guess we could unsummon Bouncing Niv. That way we still trigger it because of unsummon, but at least we don't take another one damage off Jace drawing a card. And then we can maybe time warp to pull ahead. Okay, 
so I think for now go face. And then next round we can maybe finish off Jace. Wash away. Got our Soaring City, which could also be an answer to Niv without triggering it. Okay. Is it time for Rigo? Or do we keep up Soaring City? Soaring City, I guess, would only cost two mana thanks to Tosca and Rigo. So, sure. And then finish off Jace. Still draw off Rigo at least. And pass with a bunch of interaction. It's going to be a strategic planning, that's fine. And there's Niv. And we could just untap and citywide busts, or we can Soaring City end of turn, keep the cards flowing, force them to spend 6 mana on it again. Okay, and yeah, let's attack. Could potentially Fading Hope our own Thousand Faced Shadow so we can Ninjutsu. Don't think there's a reason to do that. Draw a ton of cards of Toski and hopefully find something useful. Right, Skycat Sovereign's quite large. So that seems nice. Opponent might have a Pact of Negation in hand, which is why it's holding priority when they're tapped out. So they do have our next potential interaction covered. And then did not want to knife with a launcher shredder because then it would die to citywide bust. So we pass with a couple counter spells available. Deluge goes digging, so our opponent's trying to find a sweeper at this point. And yeah, I suppose if they find a sweeper with Pact of Negation backup, we could be in a bit of trouble. But we still have an indestructible Toski and Rigo with a shield counter on it, so... Yeah, opponent packs it in. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're facing the Lich. So typically a Paradox Engine combo deck with a lot of ramp and control elements. This hand is not particularly exciting, missing cheap creatures to go with Rigo. This we can keep. And... Uh, Turn two, probably Umezawa over Fairy Vandal, so we can keep drawing cards with Rigo on turn four. And then hoping to pick up some counter spells, which are probably going to be necessary if we want to prevent the opponent from going off. Thoughtsea is going to have a look. Can take one of our creatures. Takes Fairy Vandal. That's fine. Okay, so time for Rigo. Could see removal here. So it's gonna take a few more turns before we start drawing extra cards now. Feed the Swarm just removes the shield counter, so that's not too bad. And a Slither Blade. Okay, so we can double spell here. And then, even if they kill Rigo next turn, we can replay him. Remorse can take Departure, exiling it as well, so we cannot flash it back. 
and the Tome of Legends. Okay, time to draw more cards. Don't think I'm sacrificing Hope of Girapur here. Maze Mine Tome, another card draw engine. Okay, Joel Ryle's nice. And the Veil of Summer, perfect. Now I'm probably okay sacrificing Hope, because next turn we can activate Joel Ryle for the win. So just don't want any sweepers to wipe the board. Dread Presence. And Veil of Summer should protect Joel Ryle here. Since it's Dread Presence dealing the damage and not the land, which would be colorless. And then we can move to combats and activate Joel Ryle. And there we have it. Alright, so beat Mono Black Control, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Good Rock Monster, so Black Green lands. And see, our hand seems okay, kind of light on interaction. And I guess we'll need to find another land to play Rigo, but can always play an exotic pants on three. And I'm probably fine with turn one Storm Tamer, even though we could save it to maybe make an extra spirit token later. Okay, Tetsuko's nice. So, I guess we'll run that out now. And then we can maybe play Clarion Spirit alongside another one drop to trigger it right away. At turn two, Lenor Elves. And another tapped lands. Okay, Temple Garden lets us play Rigo. And hopefully next turn, Ageless Inside to draw even more. Soaring City offers a little bit of interaction. So, it's gonna require a pretty specific removal spell to deal with Rigo. Just a Florahedron for now. And yeah, we'll play Insight. Do I want to attack with Rigo is the question. Probably not. Don't want to risk losing the shield counter and then losing it to a removal spell. So just Storm Tamer and a Fugitive. And then we'll draw two. And then next turn we can double spell pretty easily with our Spirit. Not dealing a whole lot of damage, but certainly pulling ahead on card advantage, which we can hopefully translate into more interaction later. But yeah, opponent gets to have their fun with the Gidrog monster now. At least Soaring City is quite cheap thanks to our two legendary creatures and a citywide bust. Can also deal with it nicely. So we're missing white mana to play a Spirit and Citywide Bust, unless we draw it first here. So I guess we'll start there. Still no white mana. So, do we want to use Soaring City, perhaps? Two mana bound Gitrock Monster, and then we can still Exotic Pets. Or we can go for Citywide Bust plus maybe a Fairy Vandal. That seems reasonable too here. And then the Flash Creature. Maybe better in case of a Sweeper. As opposed to Eye Kite. It's gonna be a Thought Seize to have a look. 
In that case, I guess we'll play Vandal. Exotic Pet's also better if we pick up some plus one counters with Fairy Vandal first. So, opponent takes the Exotic Pets. And Multani. Okay, makes me regret firing off that City White Bust last turn. Can still Soaring City. And uh, Tetsuko also makes our one power and toughness creatures unblockable. So, don't have to deal with Multani right away. Although we have to be careful with Fairy Vandal not to attack into it. So, I guess we can just send Tetsuko Storm Tamer. And then see where we're at. Okay, Thousand Faced Shadow. Good ninjutsu, but probably no reason to. And then... Play some more creatures out. I kite and then keep up Soaring City. Opponent does not have double black yet. Great Henge, that's a good one. That was a reason to maybe bounce Multani right away. But we'll go for it end of turn which opens up the skies even more for creatures like Fairy Vandal to attack. And then we can maybe put our Ninjutsu to good use as well, and our opponent concedes. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Light Paws, Mono White Auras, which is a very scary deck once it kind of gets going. And uh, let's see, does Trick Proctor even do anything here? Well, I guess Trick Proctor is pretty good against Light Paws. So maybe this hand is still keepable. Alright, we'll try it. We will still need to find some more interaction that can deal with Light Paws. Since they can still just put some enchantments on it. But Proctor goes a long way means they won't be able to search up any additional enchantments unless they pay two. Spectral Steel. So 4-4 four, four Light Paws. And yeah, opponent reading Strike Proctor. Does indeed work. Next turn we'll have to decide if we want to commit Rego to the board or maybe keep up some interaction. Take four. Asper Sentinels also quite good. So I think I'm going for Sentinel, keep up, negate and spell pierce. And then next turn maybe play Rego, keep up spell pierce. Conclave Tribunal, perfect, we'll get to draw a card, and then we can choose. I think going for Heroic Intervention is fine, since the Spell Pierce and Negate can also counter opposing Auras. And our opponent concedes, yeah, this early Strict Proctor putting in a ton of work, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, what do we think of this one? Our mana's good. Turn to maybe Strict Proctor. Yeah, I guess we'll give it a shot. Facing Kenrith, the Returned King. Five color deck. And I guess we'll get this one out of the way. Get a forest. And Crossroads can come into play untapped if needed. Opponent foretells what could be a Doomscar. Go with the Proctor for now. Dusk, potentially an answer to Kenrith as well. And then we'll see if we get to play Rego, draw a card. Vanishing Verse exiles a Strict Proctor. So let's double spell Stowaway and Hope of Girapur. 
and then play Rigo once we can guarantee an extra card right away. Sword Supply Shares deals with Stowaway. Okay, I think it's uh, Rigo time. And then we can uh, perhaps cry with the Crossroads after drawing to get a bit more info. Definitely don't need more lanes now. And could use more blue mana, perhaps. And a Witness Protection, I'll bottom. Got Silent Departure to deal with creatures. Can't afford to sacrifice Hope of Garapur just yet. Asper Sentinel could be useful. So maybe start there. See if there's a response, play Joel Ryle. Okay. The fact that they countered it means I'm less afraid of a sweeper. And we'll need our double green to activate Jolrael. Still don't think I'm into sacking Hope. But we're not too far away from just killing the opponent with a Jolrael activation. Kenrith we can answer in a multitude of ways. But I kind of like bouncing it, force them to spend 5 mana replaying it. Attack. And pass it back. There's Kenrith again. And Alanor Elves. If I were to attack with a team and activate Jolrel, they're just dead. So that works. Conan takes it. And yeah, that's game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, up against the Augur of Agonies, so an Asper card draw deck. And our hand, sadly, missing a few colors, so it's gonna make it quite difficult to play our commander, even though Negate should be quite good in this matchup. Okay, this is probably fine. Asper Sentinel, probably one of our better cards in the matchup. So get that going. And then we have a couple options on two. Strict Proctor could be fine. And then hopefully pick up a couple extra lands. Okay, planes helps. So, don't really expect any flash creatures, although we could play a fugitive beforehand just to make sure the opponent cannot ambush Sentinel. Otherwise, we could go for a Strict Proctor, maybe. Avoid some ETB effects. Alright, we'll get in for one. And then next turn we could play Rigo if we'd like. Opponent with a Shattered Seraph fixing their mana. Not a huge concern. It's gonna be a Faithful Mending. Opponent has to pay the one. Mending pretty synergistic with their commander, of course. Don't necessarily expect this to be a reanimator deck, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. And then the coast is clear for Rigo. Can come down and draw an extra card right away. Opponent discarding Cleric Class, Revitalize. It's a bit of a life gain deck. Keeping up Wash Away for their commander is tempting. But we should be able to draw into some more interaction, plus we have the Fugitive to make our team unblockable. So, probably okay to let that uh, hit the battlefield. Reconnaissance mission will draw a ton of cards as well here. Radiant Fountain also countered by Strict Proctor, that's pretty funny. So no life gain. And there's Augur of Agonies. Okay, let's just go for mission. 
and hit for one in the air. And then next turn we can play the Fugitive, so Sentinel can maybe attack as well. And eventually we'll find a Bounce spell for Augur, and then we can counter it on the way down. Faithful Mending flashed back, opponent has to pay the one again, unless they want us drawing a card. So that will trigger their commander as well. And yeah, Aetherflux Reservoir, quite the payoff for reaching 50 life, although they've got a long way to go. Opponent's down to four cards in hand, and we're not gonna run out anytime soon. Jolrael, awesome too. So we have quite a few options. How about Clarion Spirit, Jolrael, maybe Angel? And then reevaluate. Got a double green for Jolral activations as well now. And there's Fading Hope, so that answers Augur of Agonies. So let's say we pass, end of turn Fading Hope, untap, play a land, activate Jolral, they're probably dead. So I think keeping up Fading Hope plus maybe Wash Away probably beats playing Angel. That way we can also bounce our own creature if needed. Augur triggers, that's fine still. Gonna wait until end of turn to Fading Hope. Veto, okay, that's kind of scary. And the Wizard class, Sentinel triggers. And our opponent's pretty much tapped out now. So Fading Hope can bounce either Veto or Augur, not that it really matters, bouncing Veto lets us scry, but this way we potentially kill Veto, which is maybe better. Okay, move to combats, send the team, and then activate Jolrel after drawing with Rigo. And this should be enough, We've got seven cards in hand. Yeah, Jolral has stolen quite a few games, although I think we would have been in good shape either way. But yeah, very threatening activation in a deck that can draw so many cards. Awesome. Okay, we're on the play. Our hands lacking a few creatures perhaps, but I think it's a keep still. Facing the Scheming Seer. So you can maybe take that out with Fateful Absence. For now, kind of liking Signet plus Herald. And next turn we could go for Rigo already. Unless we're afraid of removal on Herald. I'm gonna seize, okay. That's slowly gonna start taking up. Let's see what we draw for Rigo first before deciding which line to play. Right, can play Disruptor. A locket into Legion's Landing and a Coastal Piracy, a nice pickup. Okay, so yeah, probably fine to play Piracy. An attack. Could send Rigo and lose the shield counter to the vampire. But then we can maybe draw extra cards and we can always replay Rigo now. So I think sending Rigo is fine. Put on trades for the shield counter. And we draw two.
Okay, I guess we'll uh, pass it back. Stern Dismissal can also bounce Ominous Seas. It's gonna be a Drake Haven, also worth bouncing potentially. Opponent foretells. So what are we more worried about, Drake Haven or Ominous Seas? Probably Drake Haven. It's also more expensive for them to replay. Just want to be man efficient here. Hoo hoo! Reconnaissance mission. This is probably overkill, but well, let's do it anyway. I'm about to draw six cards. Yeah, this is kind of a rego brawl in a nutshell. Alright, so quite a few cards to choose from now. Two mana available. Sword's a nice cheap answer. Um, Want to keep some leftovers in case of a sweeper. Can maybe play a stowaway or Skycat Sovereign, although that's better to recover from a sweeper. So, yeah, I guess we'll uh, play stowaway. And then discard to hand size, Temple Garden, and... What else? Probably don't need Silent Departure. Can always flash it back. And Thousand Faced Shadow can go as well. Okay. Also an argument for discarding Fugitive since most of our creatures are unblockable anyway. Opponent does have the Sweeper. But we still have some good leftovers. Okay, so can play Sky Cats. Terramander. And then... Play Igunjo. And we can activate the Skycat end of turn if we don't need to counter anything. So that seems fine. Ominous Seas up to four counters, so then we'll need four more to make a Kraken. There's a Scheming Seer at long last. And we'll make a token. Untap. And then now Fugitive seems pretty great. And we can attack with everyone. Could also play Cleric first to pump Sovereign. And we'll see if they want to chump. If they don't, draw six more. And we'll make sure to keep some leftovers here in case of another sweeper. Fairy Vandal we can flash in out of turn, so that's ideal. And do I want a swords? Probably no need to right now. So, three... Yeah, we'll have to discard to hand size a little bit. Maybe play Angel. And pass. And then we can discard our planes. Ominous Seas up to 5. Drake Haven resolves. Token attacks, opponent gets to connive. Sure, that happens. And then with a discard, they also get to trigger Drake Haven and Ominous Sea, so that's nice. But our team is still mostly unblockable. Flash in Fairy Vandal. And then we can perhaps absence the Drake, and then Swords deals with Scheming Seer, so they cannot block Skycat Sovereign. Opponent cranks the clue end of turn, sure. Another count from Ominous Seas, but I don't think they'll get to see it make a crack in here. Could 
Could also play Jolrel and Activator, but we've seen enough of Jolrel in action already. Well, very satisfying getting to see two of these Coastal Piracy effects in play at the same time. So, kind of the epitome of the Rigo deck. Cheap creatures, lots of card draw, and eventually find some interaction to stabilize on the board and take over. So yeah, very fun deck if you're into this kind of strategy, so highly recommend it. And for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.